Welcome and thanks for joining us as we continue the road to Las Vegas. Last week marked the halfway point in West Coast Conference play and only four weeks remain until the 2010 Zappos.com WCC Basketball Championships at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from last week's action. The big news on the men's side, San Francisco upset Gonzaga in overtime 81-77. USF senior forward Dior Lohorn tossed in a game-high 22 points, knocking down a huge three at the end of regulation. That sent the game into overtime. Lohorn then connected on two more trays in the extra session to lift the Dons over the Zags. Lohorn, another three! St. Mary's moved into a first place tie with Gonzaga thanks to a pair of road wins at Pepperdine and Loyola Marymount. Junior Mickey McConnell tossed in a career high 26 points against the Waves, while Omar Samhan turned in a big night, scoring 23 points and tying his career high with 19 rebounds in the Gales 88 77 win at Pepperdine. Samhan would tally his league leading 12th double double of the season with 19 points and 13 boards in the Gales 85 67 win over the Lions. Portland also earned a sweep last week, defeating San Francisco 74-58 before downing Santa Clara 74-52. Junior Jared Stoll continued his torrid shooting, knocking down 10 three-pointers on the week to become the Pilots' all-time leader in three-point field goals made. LMU, USD, and Gonzaga each earned splits last week. The Lions, led by sophomore Kevin Young's game-high 21 points and eight rebounds, defeated San Diego 68-65. On the women's side, Gonzaga continued to roll, earning an 81-43 win over Santa Clara before defeating San Francisco 93-53. Junior Courtney Vandersloot scored a game-high 19 points to go along with 8 assists and 7 steals in the Zags' win over the Broncos, while senior Heather Bowman became Gonzaga's all-time scoring leader and just the fourth man or woman at GU to score more than 2,000 career points in the Bulldogs' win over San Francisco. St. Mary's remained just one game behind the Zags with wins over Pepperdine and Loyola Marymount. Junior Luella Tomlinson led the Gales all week, averaging 24 points, 13.5 rebounds, and 6.5 blocks per game in the two wins. Portland also earned a sweep of Bay Area foes San Francisco and Santa Clara. Portland sophomore Alexis Gannis registered her fifth double-double of the season, scoring 20 points while hauling down a career-high 17 rebounds against the Dons. Gannis would add 16 points and grab seven boards in the Pilots' win over the Broncos. Rounding out this week's action, San Diego and Pepperdine both earned splits. The Toreros, led by senior forward Morgan Henderson's 22 points and 7 rebounds, defeated LMU 69-60, while sophomore guard Jasmine Jackson led a balanced Pepperdine attack with 14 points in the Waves' 61-49 victory over USD. This week we take a look at a players and part of three WCC regular season champions and help bring home two WCC tournament crowns to his school. For the past three seasons, senior guard Matt Bolden has been the epitome of Gonzaga basketball. And this season, his senior year, he's having his best year, and he's helped lead the Bulldogs back into the national spotlight. They say that point guards aren't made, they're born. Though Gonzaga's Matt Bolden may not be your traditional point guard, he was born to play the position. More importantly to Gonzaga and Zag fans across the nation, he was born to play for the Bulldogs. My high school coach, he's one of my best friends, came up to me and said, uh, he said, Matt, I think you were, you know, you were born to play at Gonzaga. And uh, I mean, right then I was like, I think, you know, I think you're right. Uh, I mean, me and my dad had talked about it and we'd been, you know, kind of itching towards it. But when my high school coach told me that, I was like, yeah, I think you're right. So that, that was probably the turning point for me. I remember calling Coach Few that night. A throwback player who is constantly perfecting his craft, Bolden's game and style evoke images of a young Pistol Pete Maravich. In the end, Bolden knew he belonged at Gonzaga. Gonzaga was, you know, a pretty easy choice. Um, there were a bunch of schools after me, but easily Gonzaga was the best fit, <laughs> simply because of the, you know, the success they've had with all the guards they've had. They're uh, a lot of the same, same type of players as me. Um, and when you see somebody, you know, that successful at that position, the way they play, uh, makes you want to be there. And the coaching staff gives you a lot of freedom. They were great, and the community is great. It was just a good fit. After graduating several key players from last year's NCAA Sweet 16 team, Gonzaga was supposed to have 
a rebuilding year. But behind a solid nucleus of returners and an influx of talented newcomers, the Zags once again find themselves among the nation's elite. Yeah, uh, this preseason I had no idea what to expect. I knew we were going to be tough. I knew our core guys could play with anybody in the country, but I didn't know, uh, I hadn't seen Elias play yet, and I hadn't, uh, I hadn't seen any of the freshmen. I mean, it was really just our core guys, you know, me, Rob, Steve, Meech. Uh, we just kind of binded together and really, you know, worked hard and really went at each other all summer and, uh, and just knew that we were going to have to bring these guys in and just get them up to speed. It is that culture that has sustained Gonzaga's success for more than a decade. Me and Jeremy Pargo were great friends. Uh, that whole, all those seniors. I lived with Ira, I lived with Jeremy. Uh, Micah was a good friend of mine. Josh was a good friend of mine. I mean, all those guys, you know, really, really knew what it took to, to be successful. And they, yeah, they showed me a lot. And I, uh, I owe a lot of it to them. I mean, just having great teammates is, is huge in college basketball, and I, I've had the best. It is those teammates who have looked to Bolden in tough situations, and the senior has delivered time and time again. You know what, we have to look for him on the court because we know he can get buckets for us. We know he can uh, score at any time, so we, all, we can rely on that. And he's one of the guys that's okay. If something goes wrong, we know we can rely on him. On the court, Matt is as cool as they come. Off the court, his teammates know the real Matt Bolden. He's a different dude. He's a different style. Uh, he loves his music. He's a goofball. Like, man, he's always making jokes in the locker room. He's always, you know, uh, at serious times in the locker room where we're watching film, I can look over and he's making a face at me. He has like this little Grinch face he does where like his face goes up like this. He, he knows everything about everyone for some reason. He knows he just is TMZ himself. He is TMZ, so he knows a lot. Probably like every other college guy out there. Um, play video games, uh, go to movies. Go out with my friends. Uh, yeah, just typical stuff. Go, I go to a ton of concerts, probably more concerts than anybody you know. Uh, and I love all music. Uh, I don't know, I'm a huge, yeah, probably music buff to the most. But And I, I love to shop too. A lot of people, I mean, everybody on my team likes to shop. They all tell you that I'm the biggest shopper just because trying to throw me under the bus. With the Zappos.com WCC Basketball Championships just a month away, Matt hopes to lead the Zags to another tournament title in Las Vegas. It was a blast playing there. Uh, that whole city's fun. Uh, and I love just, yeah, just the atmosphere. It was just, we were all playing really well, and it was, uh, everybody wants to win. You know, it's any, any man's game on a neutral floor. And so, uh, and especially in this conference, I mean, it, anybody can win any night, which is, which is something else. Uh, especially how well every other team's been playing this year. But, yeah, playing in Vegas is a blast. Uh, playing on neutral floor is great, and I can't wait to go. Rivalries take center stage next week as the WCC teams begin the second half of conference play. Let's take a look at the matchups. Tipping off the action this Thursday on the men's side, San Francisco travels to San Diego, Gonzaga hosts Pacific Northwest Faux Portland, and Santa Clara visits St. Mary's. On Saturday, Gonzaga steps out of conference to take on Memphis, while Santa Clara travels to San Diego to visit the Toreros. Loyola Marymount hosts Pepperdine, while San Francisco heads across the Bay Bridge to take on rival St. Mary's. On the women's side, Santa Clara hosts Bay Area rival St. Mary's, while San Diego travels to San Francisco to take on the Dons. The women's schedule wraps up on Saturday with all eight teams taking the court. Gonzaga travels to Portland. LMU hosts rival Pepperdine. St. Mary's makes the short trip to San Francisco. And Santa Clara hosts San Diego. That does it for this week's episode. Be sure to join us next Wednesday for another edition of The Road to Las Vegas. I'm George Devine for WCC TV.